Welcome to my comparison between the iPhone 5 and the Samsung Galaxy S3. These are considered the best phones in the Apple iOS and Android ecosystems. So far, I'm very happy with one of them, but I wanted to, to have a real sense of both phones so I have both for a while to see which one I am going to like the best. So comparing the most obvious things, let's start with the size. Obviously, the Samsung phone is much, much bigger than the Apple device. It's, I would say, a good 15 to 20% maybe bigger than the iPhone. It is about the same weight, although the Samsung may be slightly heavier than the, than the iPhone 5. And in terms of thickness, they're pretty much the same. Now, let's compare the design of both devices. The iPhone 5 is very well finished with an aluminum case of a high-grade aluminum and, and it feels very solid. It feels like a fine piece of machinery. This, I can say, will last for a very long time. And uh, if we take a look, it's pretty much perfect in terms of quality of the construction of the actual device. It feels very solid, very comfortable in the hand. I think this is the right size and I don't have small or extremely big hands. It's, you know, average in size and I can hold it and reach every single corner of the phone with ease. The Samsung, on the other hand, is bigger. So if you like big phones, this may be your cup of tea. However, it doesn't feel that comfortable. I, 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 can't, I can't feel my hand uh, that is, is, is not sitting that well around the phone. It's, it's, it's a little overextended. It, it is definitely not that comfortable. It's very, it feels very thin because of the, of, of the size of the phone. It's not that thin though, but it just feels very thin and very, very, very slippery. It, it, it's, it's kind of uh, like holding a bar of soap uh, that is big and flat and thin. But if you like a big screen, comparing both screens, this one is big. This is not that big. Let's discuss some other things in terms of usability of both phones. I see that the iPhone 5 as a standard uh, interface is very, very clean. The Retina display is absolutely gorgeous. There is no way I can see a pixel in this screen and it's impossible to see this on YouTube of course but honestly I, I just can't see the pixels the display is extremely extremely high definition the Samsung phone on the other hand um, has a relatively high definition screen, although it is definitely not as high as the iPhone 5. You can definitely see the pixels and the contrast ratio is not as high as in the iPhone 5. That's clear. The interface per se looks and feels, how can I say this, a little bit Linuxy, if you know what I mean. It's not that integrated as in the iPhone 
five, and it's it, it doesn't feel that well finished. It seems like a bunch of different developers and different companies were trying to come together to do something, and it sort of works, but not quite as elegant as the iPhone 5, I think. A major issue that I found with this phone is a, a basic design flaw, among other things. For instance, if I hold the phone this way and I'm trying to watch a video, it is very easy, just like that, to touch the back button with the palm of your hand. Let's do that again. I hold it like this, I, I'm trying to see a video, and then I just touched it without, of course, wanting to. And there's nothing you can do about that. It's just the, 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 the design of the phone is flawed. It will happen again and again. You just, you just hold the phone the wrong way, and then it takes you out of the screen you wanted to see. That's an issue for me. Another issue, it's very hard to type, at least for me on this phone. Very, very hard to type. And uh, it, it, it's, it's not that usable, in my opinion. And also, it's filled with features. It has a vast amount of features. I would say much more feature-rich than the iPhone 5. For instance, they say in one of their uh, settings, let's take a look if we can if we can see that now, in the security and lock screen feature, for instance, you can, in theory, unlock the phone with your face. Let's see if I can find that. Uh, lock, screen lock, the pattern. Okay. There's somewhere in here, a location where you can actually take a picture of yourself and then watch the camera and the phone will unlock itself just by looking at you. Sounds terrific. Well, it kind of work, but not all the time. And that is unacceptable. That That is just not what I want in a phone. I, I don't want to to have the phone work half of the times. I want, I need the phone to work 100% of the times. So, of course, the iPhone 5 doesn't have that feature. Uh, you cannot unlock the phone. They don't tell you that you could unlock the phone just by looking at it. But what it does, it does perfectly. So it doesn't have a bunch of features that sort of work, that are half-cooked. The features that it has, well, they work. I know that uh, people have said that the maps app doesn't work. In my experience, you know, it hasn't been that bad. Although I don't use it that much, I know that they're improving the maps as we speak. And I have no doubt that in a, in a matter of months, the maps will just be perfect. I have used it a couple of times on, for, for navigational purposes. And you have to give that to the Android platform. The navigation in the Android platform has always worked in a much consistent and better way than on the iPhone without paying for a third-party app. Well, that was a historical situation, but not anymore. I, I have found that the new map with navigation app for the iPhone 5 works very, very well. Of course, not, not perfect, but, but really, really well. What would I change on the iPhone 5, though? Well, when you take a look at things like the widgets on the Android platform, I can see the iPhone 5 having a little bit more use of the screens other than just a bunch of icons. I, I could see Apple doing something with this beautiful screen uh, other than just having all the icons there and having just the interface being touching the icon and going into the app. Something could be done. Not sure exactly what, 
but I think something could be done with, with, with the interface to make it a little bit more interesting. In summary, although both are good phones, and if you're into Android a lot, then you, I think you will be happy with, with the Samsung Galaxy S3. Although, I definitely, definitely prefer the iPhone 5, by far. This phone is very, very well constructed, and it feels like a very well constructed phone. All the details have been considered, and the features that it has, well, they work. They really would do. They do, really, really do work very well. Samsung is uh, big, has a large screen, pretty large, and has a lot of features. A lot of those features don't work perfectly. But if you like big phones and, uh, you know, plasticky electronics, then this could be the phone for you. This is the back of the phone, and it has interchangeable batteries. A plus for Samsung, if that is important for you. The iPhone 5 is, of course, sealed, and uh, you can't even try to change the battery. You would ruin the phone. Anyway. That is my review and comparison of two of the best, if not the best, phones out there today. Thank you for watching.